Hello guys, this is the Epiphany. Today I'm going to show you how to order a Magus to mage an item for you or how to make an EXO order. And these are the two ways that are usually done when you want to get an item maged. Alternatively, you could buy an item that is already maged from the market, but there are a lot of people who like to ask a Magus to mage for them. And the most common way I'm going to show you first involves asking a Magus to mage an item for you right in front of you. And the first thing you want to do is consider the item that you want to be maged. So, for example, in my case, I would like to mage these Miseries Treads, which is a level 200 item. So, to get this mage, you have to ask a shoe magus that is equal to the level of the item or higher so obviously the max level is level 200 so this will be mageable by level 200 and to do that you need to click this book which shows you the list of crafters it it exists in every single maging workshop in the game and you want to click the profession that corresponds to what item you're maging so shoe magus is for shoes and belts craft magus is for shields Smith Magus is for axe, for daggers, uh, for swords, for shovels. Costume Magus is for hats and cloaks. Magus is for staffs, for wands and bows. Jewel Magus is for amulets and for rings. So for Shoe Magus, you click that and it will show you all the Magus that have listed their name in the work uh, in the book if you're a magus and you want to list your name just tick on uh, just click it there and it will appear in the book so i ticked my name so now i'm here but and it will also show you the location if they are inside a maging workshop so shadow falx here um he's in the workshop i'm going to ask him to major in a moment another thing you notice here is the minimum recipe level which means this is the minimum level item that they would like to mage so for myself i've put level 190 so i don't want to mage anything below level 190 because that's too low and you know they can find someone else that's a lower level to mage and the k here anyone who puts a k means they require payment but it's quite common sense that you know a customer should be paying a level 200 major because it's common sense you know like okay so if you are asking someone to mage, the person maging needs to be standing right next to the workshop. So in this case, he is. And you click him and you go, ask to shoe mage. If you are a major and you would like to invite someone to workshop, so you want to invite a customer, you have to stand next to it, click the customer, and then click invite to shoe mage. But in this case, I am uh, you know, asking him to mage. So... I'll click that and then ask to shoe mage like that. So once you have asked them to shoe mage or any other mage, what you notice is that there is an interface that shows the profession, the profession level of the mages. And yeah, so there is also a bag of ingredients here. What you want to do is you want to double click or drag your item to be maged into the box. And you also want to transfer the necessary runes into there. And you can do this in a multiple number of ways. Drag it, click OK, or double click while holding the control key. So hold control, double click like that. But then sometimes it comes up with this bug. I don't know why. Uh, but the quickest way to do it is to filter usable items, which will you know show the runes and maging potions or uh, signature rune transcendence rune whatever so you want to click this and then transfer visible items transferring visible items to transfer all the runes into there it didn't transfer these things though because it doesn't consider them as you know runes now you also notice there is a payment option here and you need to be very careful when you are paying a magus so the normal payment for a Magus just to fix the stats is 100kk. So when you put in 100kk, um, what happens is 
you need to share which means you give them the right to mage your item because right now if you don't press share they cannot mage your item you know i've had a lot of situations where the customer wants me to mage they put the stuff in but they don't press share so i can't do anything so usually the magus will ask you what stats you want on it and just tell them fix stats normally or you can list out all the stats you want but towards the end of the video i'll show you a proper way to list out the stats about the payment you can either pay them straight away or you can pay them after they finish the mage you know it's up to you and the magus to decide that um, if you are paying beforehand you need to be very careful and i'll show you why because when you press share they can so they're obviously going to upload the boots and then start maging and all it takes for them is to add one rune to the item so let's see let's see okay they added a rune you press stop or if you close the thing you lose the payment so that's how it works so you know if someone is ordering you uh like i don't know they, they want you to pay them like five million karmas for an exo mage you know you should pay them in intervals or pay them at the end don't put five million karmas in immediately they just need to add one rune and then they'll take your payment and log off or whatever so you've got to be very careful about that you notice that the runes you have uploaded into there have a yellow square um going around them and what happens there is every time the magus mages something you notice that the number of runes goes down because that's obvious and a common question i get from people is how many of each rune should i buy to supply to the magus because as the customer you are technically supposed to supply your magus with all the necessary runes and you know ingredients for them to mage and the rule for that is it's not really a rule but i'm going to make it up now there's also three types of runes there's a standard rune there's a par rune and there's a ra rune and you want to think um you know you, like how how do you know what rune you should get and the um i'm going to mention a rule here that i pretty much just made up and i think is logical and it's called the 10 multiple rule so what the 10 multiple rule states is that if the item the stats exist in 10 times the amount that the rune gives or more then you should get the next rune up so what i mean by that okay so let's have a look at this wisdom rune the wisdom rune gives one wisdom so 10 times one is 10 so if the item has 10 wisdom or more then you should buy par wisdom runes for your magus if okay so in this case free wisdom times 10 is 30 wisdom if the item has 30 wisdom or more then you should buy the ra wisdom rune for your magus uh, th does that make sense um let me know if you have any questions about that um okay let's look at vitality now 15 vitality times 10 is 150 so if the item has 150 vitality or more you should buy the raw vitality rune so in this case yes now why um how many of each rune should you get and i think a good number is 50. the reason for that is because it's not too small and it's not too much because if you buy you know like let's say 10 of each rune and the magus runs out of runes you're gonna have to stop the mage you're gonna have to go outside buy more runes and come back and that's wasting time you know like as a magus myself and customers have done that to me you know it's a waste of time and i get very impatient so you want to supply a, a, a suitable amount of runes for them to mage so 50 runes is um, appropriate for 
each type that you're getting. Um, a lot of people think that having, uh, you know, like ha ha buying 50 runes of each is too expensive. Well, it's actually not because runes can be resold. They can be used for future mages if you, you know, you have spares. And even for me, when I mage for people and they have sp spare runes, usually I offer to just buy it from them for like 10% off or something. Because, you know, I'm a mage and I need a lot of runes, you know, like my runes will, if they don't get used today, they'll be used in a week, you know, like. So it's, it's, it's just like I can save them and they will be used eventually, you know. So... Yeah, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of, you know, like buying a lot of runes. It's it's not like you're throwing money down the drain. You can you can easily resell them. You can also, uh, you know, use them in the future. Uh, it honestly depends. Okay, so once you're happy with the mage, uh, you know, like when he's finished the mage and you're happy with the mage, you can either press stop here or you can just press the escape button and it'll close the thing. Now, when that's done, you know, if you didn't pay your Magus at the start, then, you know, pay them at the end. You know, I'll pay this guy since he had to, like, waste 10 minutes of his life, and, you know, I'll pay him anyway, and I'm, I've got enough calms for... Oh. Uh, maybe he doesn't want payment. Uh, oh, fine, sure. Alright, cheers for that. Uh, uh, you see, look. Customers coming and asking for a mage always happens. Literally at least five times every single day. And you see, the funny thing is, I only listed my shoe magus. And these guys are wanting amulets and hats. You know, honestly, in, in my case, it's... Um, I don't even need to list my name on the book. And, you know, I'm, I'm popular enough that people will still come and ask me for a mage. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, I've got to tell him that I'm busy. Okay, so that was the um, example of what to, um, you know, like how to ask someone to mage for you. And I'm going to show you another example uh, with regards to that 10 multiple rule. Okay, so let's say I have an airman's rolling pin here. Prospecting. Basic rune gives one prospecting, so that means if the item has 10 prospecting or more, you should be getting the par rune, and in this case, yes. However, for AP parry, it gives one, but you notice that the maximum on the item is only 6, so that's less than 10, so technically you do not need to supply your magus with the par AP res rune. Um, what other items can I show you uh, as an example? Um... Alright, let's jammy jack collar. Okay, so we have um, air damage. So plus one air damage here. If the item has 10 air damage or more, you should be supplying them with the par air damage rune. And in this case, the item has 20 air damage. So yes, you should be supplying them. And keep in mind, you know, buy 50 of each. It's a very good number to work with. It's not too much. It's not too less. You know, 50 is a safe number and i highly recommend you do 50. okay so the first half of the video is done that is the most common way to ask someone to mage for you the next option is to order an exo and i'm going to show you how to do this through the use of websites and um you know asking um for an exo mage order on discord and whatnot okay so um, I've got Dofu's book open here and I've also got a new Dofu's set planning website called Dofu's Lab open here. Um, I will be making a video about this later on to spread awareness about it because it's like 10 times better than Dofu's book. It's literally the same as the, Do the old Dofu's planner back in uh, 2018. So yeah, I'll, I'll be promoting this later on, but uh, back to the video here. So, here is an example of how to order an EXO. So, I want to order a Alistair Crown that is EXO Mage 3% Earth or 3% Fire Resistance. And 
the reason why you know I, I could major it myself but i simply can't be bothered it's a range sink and it's you know three percent resistance so it's just ridiculous and what you do is you use the website uh okay so let, let's let's try this with uh all right okay firstly dofu's book uh smith mage and you notice the range here you can edit this stuff and to whatever you want and what you do is you edit these to the minimum required stats you want and you take a screenshot and you post it so the reason why you do this is because as a person maging you know an item for you they need to know what your minimum required uh, uh, stats are and the reason for that is obviously for a few reasons if you require stats that are too you know too too good or over the top stats that'll be impossible for them to do and you know they don't want to accept the task and then finish the mage and then later on you tell them oh but i wanted these stats you know, like it has happened before. It's pretty ridiculous. So if you are ordering an Xword item, you need to tell them the minimum range of stats you want. So um, for Dofu's book, that's what you do. And for Dofu's lab, you can also do the same thing uh, by modifying this, um, you know. So what I've done here is I've written down the minimum required stats that I require for this item and also 3% earth and 3% fire resistance. And, you know, the stats I put are reasonable. They're not impossible stats uh, because, you know, I don't want, to, you know, it's the fact that I'm asking someone to mage for me is, um, you know, you've got to be considerate of them, you know, because maging is not an easy thing to do. You know, you've got to be considerate. You, you don't want to ask them for, to make you stats that are impossible so i tagged the magus role so everyone who's a magus in the echo discord will be able to see that and i also need to mention the minimum stat uh minimum payment i will pay if the stats i get are precisely the same as these now additionally you need to make an extra comment which will you know show that you are willing to pay extra if the stats that the person majors for you are extra so what this means here is see how i have um i, I need 390 vitality at least on this item i'm saying plus 50 kk per vitality so if this item had 400 vitality like if the person produce an item with 400 vitality and every single other stat is the same That'd be an extra 500,000 karmas for them because it's an extra 10 vitality. So I would be paying 4 million karmas for an item that is 400 vitality and the rest of the stats the same as this. Or let's say we have plus 500 KK for plus one air damage. So I want 19 air damage, but if it's 20 air damage, then I'd be paying 4 million. You know, so all of these uh, requirements here are uh, added together you know so let's say 400 vitality and 40 out of 40 wisdom so that would cost 500 kk for the 10 vitality plus the six wisdom which is an extra 600 kk so that's 1.1 million over this so 4.6 million so if the item had 400 vitality 40 wisdom and the rest of the stats like this I would be paying 4.6 million carbers and obviously it has to have the 3% earth or 3% fire because that's how it works so you know the, this is how you order an extra mage item and it doesn't have to be for 3% earth resistance only you could also do this for AP exos MP exos range exos summon exos and you know that's what you want to do for your uh, you know anyone who's willing to take the take the order uh, if you have any questions about that let me know and i'll explain it in detail um yeah um so the the beauty about doing this thing is that as a customer yourself you have the advantage that you have solid evidence that you have 
posted your minimum stats. So if somebody came to me with the stats, um, you know, 3% earth major onto the Alistair crown, but the vitality was 389, I have the right to not accept the item. And the reason for that is because it's below the minimum required stats that I have posted. So you, you see what I mean? Like if you have the, the evidence there, you can refuse the item if it doesn't meet your requirements. So that's the advantage about ordering an EXO. And yeah, uh, so far nobody has taken my order because I think either my price is too low or it's just the cancer item to mage in general. But yeah, that's how you order an EXO mage. Um, that's the second most common way of ordering an item. The first way obviously being asking someone to mage for you inside the workshop. Uh, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, let me know below and I'll be sure to answer it properly because this is a very, very common uh, topic of discussion and a lot of confusion, you know, especially with the uh, knowing what runes to buy and how many runes to buy uh, for your magus. See you at the next video.